the man of justice the man with wisdom the day of faruq azam the day of faruq azam الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمصرين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Please recite after me الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله ما دير respected viewers of moderation we once again welcome you in this beautiful series of program about sayyidna faruq azam radiyallahu ta'ala we will be inshallah azza wa jalla presenting a tribute in the court of second caliph of islam sayyidna umar faruq azam radiyallahu ta'ala and today inshallah we will be trying to cover as many different dimensions of the personality of the second caliph of islam the great umar sayyidna faruq azam radiyallahu ta'ala and there is so much to learn about him and inshallah this program will be a detailed discussion about this personality but before we proceed towards our uh, topics which will be inshallah discussing today let's make few good intentions ma shaykh tariqat amir of ahli sunnah hazrat alama maulana muhammad ilyas attar qadri damat barakatuhum al ahliya has given us a beautiful mindset that we should make good intentions before we perform any permissible task or any good deed as we are presenting this program we all make this intention we'll do this for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're watching sure. this program you can make this intention you will watch from start to end you'll remember what you learn act upon and pass this knowledge on to others too there is so much to learn today inshallah azza wa jalla you can add as many good intentions as possible you can easily multiply the reward inshallah azza wa jalla today alhamdulillah joins me مبلغ في دعوة الإسلامي محمد وسيم أباس التاري Let's go towards him السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله ويلكم وسيم أباس باي جزاك الله جزاك الله How excited you are to discuss about the sacred caliph of Islam سيدنا عمر فاروق عزم رضي الله تعالى سبحان الله The sacred days of محرم الحرام are fast approaching and the sacred days also begin with the great spectacular martyrdom of the second caliph of Islam, the leader of the faithful, Sayyid Umar bin Khattab radiallahu And um, whenever we talk about Umar bin Khattab radiallahu it is just amazing. Whenever we cover his noble personality, whenever we cover his noble traits, and uh, it is uh, a grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to have given such a personality to us and for us to be followers of such a great personality. It's so, a blessing for us to discuss indeed, such a great personality. Indeed, so um, as excited as ever to pay tribute to this great personality and be amongst those who do his mention and hopefully gain blessings of his mention in this world and in the hereafter. Definitely, inshallah. So you me, we've got our brother Nath Khan, Muhammad Amir, bhai, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Respected viewers of Panel Shalom, I think it's better to discuss, uh, to begin this program with the Naat of Mustafa Kareem al Hussar. Let's begin, inshallah, this program with the praise of Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam. Salu al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala. Sare Gulshan Koon Dekhe Dasht Taiba Chhode Kaisu Ve Jannat Koon Jai Dari Tumhara Chhode Kaisu سرگزشتے غم کہوں کسے تیرے ہوتے ہوئے سرگزشتے غم کہوں کسے تیرے ہوتے ہوئے کس کے در پر 
जाऊं तेरा आसताना छोड़ गए किसके दे पे जाऊं तेरा आसताना छोड़ गए बेलिकाए Subhanallah, beautiful lot of brother of Allah, Zat Shah Ina Muhammad Raza Khan, Alayhi Rahmatul Rahman, Maulana Shah and Shahi Sukhan, Maulana Hassan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. We were listening this beautiful lot of Mustafa Sallallahu Ta'ala, Alayhi Wa Alayhi Wa Sallam, our respected views of Madani Channel. Today, inshallah, we'll be talking about the great personality, second caliph of Islam, Sayyidina Omar Farooq Azam, Radiallahu Ta'ala. You uh, should join this program, ask your family members, children, they can come and sit. We should learn about our true heroes of Islam. Uh, in the start, if we just take a bit of introduction of Sayyidina Insha- Farooq Azam, radiallahu ta'ala, and inshallah, and we'll take it further from that. Inshallah. At the very beginning, this one, when it's um, listen to an introductory account of this great personality, just to get a gist of um, of what, kind, what a great personality, legendary personality he was, and what kind of traits he possessed. 
Um, you see, the Arabian Peninsula, when we talk about it, it mainly comprises of a sandy and mountainous terrain, and there are a lot of harair within the Arabian Peninsula. Now, what is harair? It's plural of uh, harra, and harra is a land in which uh, you would find many burnt black rocks. Right. And Medina Sharif, that's also situ situated between two Harar in Arab Sharif, in the Arab Arabian Peninsula. One is called Harra Babara, which is towards the west of Medina al Munawwara, and one is um, Harra Baqim, which is towards the east of Medina al Munawwara. Now, generally within this region, you'll find the climate to be very, very hot. Right. However, between the Harair, um, the weather also gets very, very cold. This is also one of the specialities that we know Arabian Peninsula to be of a um, hot climate. But within Harair, where Madinat al Munawwara is also situated, we know that the weather also gets very, very cold as well uh, during winter. Now, uh, it was one very cold freezing night in okay. Madinat al Munawwara where the, the winter, the cold was at its peak. Now, let alone human beings, even uh, no signs of animals were seen on the streets. It was so, so cold that the, after Maghrib, when it was dark, it gave such, uh, such a feeling to anyone that anyone would get scared if you would go out in such dark, in such cold, freezing night. Anyhow, in the midst of all this, in this extremely cold night, all of a sudden, two residents of Medina are seen to uh, to be walking in the streets of Medina. Okay. And just by looking at them, it seemed as if um, how comfortable they were, it seemed as if this is their normal routine. As it's very cold, normally people won't come out, but how they were walking through the streets of Medina, it seemed as if they're used to this. And one of them seemed to be master and the other seemed to be the servant. However, there wasn't very distinctive uh, clothing or any such kind of thing between both of them. Yeah. Now, this depicted the greatness of the master as well, that he had not uh, he worn any you know, extraordinary clothing which would show him to be superior than his servant. Anyhow, the, the way the master was talking to, the, to his servant, the way he was carrying himself along with him, uh, it, wasn't, it, it didn't show that he deemed himself to be superior than the other, so on and so forth. Anyhow, they're both, they're walking through the, through the streets of Medina, and in the midst of such severe, cold, freezing night, they walk all the way outside Medina al Manavara, approximately three miles. Okay. Three miles, they go outside Madinat Madin al-Manawara. Now, all of a sudden, at one place, they both stopped. Okay. And at a distance, they see, they see a camp, a tent, where fire is lit. Okay. Now, this was something unusual for them. So the master, he asked his servant that, Oh, Aslam, do you know that? Who could it be in such severe, cold, freezing night? And he responded um, in negation, expressing his unawareness. Yeah. So the master, he says again that it looks as if there was a caravan passing by here and it stopped over here to spend the night in such a freezing cold night. So saying this, they go close to the camp, to the tent, and they're astonished to see that it's not any caravan or any passing by group that is staying there. It is a broken house of a woman, a poor destitute woman who's staying in there with her children. And now what is happening in there is that the woman has put a cooking pot on the stove, on the fire, and she is trying to please her children, her kids, who are crying out of wow. hunger. She's trying to please them, and she has that pot on the... Uh, pretending on the, that she is cooking. Indeed, pretending that she is cooking something so that the kids go to sleep, and they're crying because of hunger. Now, the master, he goes there, and he, say, he says salam to the woman, but she doesn't really reply in a good manner. And she says, um, the master, he asks her that, can I uh, come inside? And the woman, she replied that, if you intend for goodness, then come inside. Otherwise, don't bother. Don't come inside. Now, the woman, she was, of course, extremely grieved. She was destitute. Her children are crying. And they, she hasn't got any provisions. So anyway, uh, the master that goes inside, and he asks her that, oh, woman, who are you? And why are these uh, kids crying? To which she replies that I'm the resident of Medina. And these uh, they, they are my children and they are very, very hungry. This is why they are crying. And then he asks that, what is inside the cooking pot? And then the woman, she replies that there's just water in there. And I've done that so that they can get a bit pleased that wow. food is being cooked and so that they can go to sleep. Now, the woman, she carries on to express her pain and she says that I'm a very poor woman and I haven't got enough money that I can feed them. 
And that's why I'm just trying to please them, just to soothe them. And then she carries on to complain about Amir al-Mu'mineen of the time, saying that we are his subjects, but yet he doesn't know about our days and nights, how they're being spent. Anyway, she carries on to mention all this. And then the master, listening to the woman, he, became, he becomes very, very saddened with tears in his eyes. And he says that, O oh woman, may Allah shower his mercy upon you. And then he carries on to talk to her and mentioning that, why don't you tell about this to Amir al-Mu'mineen? She again says that, what kind of ruler he is who doesn't know Allah. what we are going through, so and so Allah forth. Anyways, the master, he comes out of the house and he says to his uh, servant, whose name was Aslam, that come with me quickly. So bear in mind that they're three, meal, uh, three miles outside Madinah al Munawwara. Now they start coming back in Madinah al Munawwara, And the master, he's, he's lost in some kind of imagination. He's thinking about something. And they walk quickly back inside Medina. Sure. And as they're walking back, as they're coming inside Medina, they come to a place, to a storage center or a warehouse, you want to call, whatever you want to call, where um, wheat and uh, grain, these provisions are stored. So he asks his servant to open the door. The right. door gets opened. He uh, gets some food provisions, including flour, some dates, some money, uh, all this, um, fills a sack and asks his servant to load it all on his, onto oh, his wow. back. Oh. Bearing in mind, this is the master. Now the servant, he says that, Your Honor, why don't you let me take this load on my back? Yeah. And then this master, he says that today in this dunya, you will take my load. Oh, yeah. But on the day of judgment, would you be able to take to bear my burden? Allah. The servant, he uh, abides by what the master had said. And he places all that uh, load onto the uh, back of master. Now, once again, both these individuals, they start walking back in the same direction. So three miles again, they go to the house of the woman, little while later, they reach over there and they take all their stuff, they put it on the ground and the master, he asks the woman to open, open the sacks and all of a sudden there's flour inside there. And he uh, says to her that bring salt so we can prepare harira, a type of dish. Yeah. Anyways, himself. Gee, anyways, that, that's uh, what's coming for, uh, further, that the master, he starts to light up the fire so and he's blowing in the fire. The smoke is going through his blessed beard. He's blowing in the fire. He's lighting up the fire. And as it lights up, the food then is uh, put on the stove, is put on the fire. Eventually, the food is cooked. He asks the woman to bring um, a big pot. He places all the food in there. And now the food is, of course, really, really hot. So he waits for it to cool down. The food cools down. And then the kids who are crying because of hunger, he calls them and he feeds them with his yeah. own hands. Subhan. Now he, fe he feeds them. And now to hearten the kids, he starts to play with them. Subhan. The kids become more joyous, more happy. And after whilst playing out of this joy, out of this happiness, they fall asleep. Allah. The kids, they now fall asleep. The rest of the food, um, this very master, Subhan. he leaves over there. Uh, with the woman and it seemed as if a great burden has been disloaded, has been unloaded from him and he's attained some kind of peace and tranquility. Now, the woman, she uh, addressed him saying that you're very kind, you helped us during this uh, difficult time. I can't do anything to you, but may Allah reward you. You are deserving to be Amir al-Mu'mineen. And now this master, he says, you know, that Amir al-Mu'mineen and me, he of course, out of humility, says all the words that he could. And his uh, servant, Aslam, was also there. He was becoming also quite uh, astonished over the reaction of his master. Now, Rizwan, in the midst of all this, you see, if uh, any of us are in such kind of situation where someone praises us, then what would be our situation? We would introduce ourselves, who we are. I am actually so-and-so. Yes, I did this to you, I'm so-and-so. But this very master, he said that, oh woman, whatever you are saying, like I am deserving of being Amir al-Mu'mineen, me and Amir al-Mu'mineen, what, what a strange thing you are saying. However, if you come in the court of Amir al-Mu'mineen, you, you will find me to be there. But he still doesn't say anything else. Allah. Now this master, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, comes out and he addresses his servant saying that, oh Aslam, it was hunger that had kept these young children awake. And when I saw them, when I saw the state of this, it reminded me of my own children. Allah. And at that time, 
I made this intention in my heart that until and unless I don't change the starvation so, into satiation, until I don't change their weeping into smiling, into laughing, and their grief into happiness, until then I will not sit down peacefully. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, I have succeeded in my intention. And Alhamdulillah, Allah Almighty has made me successful in whatever I had intended. And both these individuals now go back where they came from in the streets of Medina al Munawwara. Now, this personality who we are talking about, this personality who up to now we've been referring to as the master, this personality who went all the way three miles out of Medina al Munawwara in a cold freezing night, then came back three miles into Medina, then went, went back three miles. Who was this very individual? Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Who was this individual who had so much pain for the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his heart, but so much fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who had so much love and compassion for the children. It was none other than the second Caliph of Islam, our master, our leader, the coolness of our eyes, the heartbeat of our hearts, Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. This is that personality who was the Amir al muminin of the time who would go out in the streets of Medina al Munawwara in the night looking after the people, looking after their affairs if anyone needed anything. And in case he came across someone who needed something, this is how he would serve them. This is how he would Subhan answer Allah. their calls. This was our leader. This was our master, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. Subhanallah, who is known to be in murad e Rasul. Allah, Allah. Who is known Allah. to be in the wish of Rasul is the dua of Mustafa Kareem Salam. Salam. who is Mutammimul Arba'in who is the one who completed the figure of 40 he is the 40th one who accepted Islam Subhanallah. Subhanallah. upon the hands of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and probably upon the acceptance of Islam of Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam Radiallahu Ta'ala and when he Subhanallah uh, came and accepted Islam the passion Sahaba Ikram showed Allah. the the takbir which was raised, the, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was uh, he raised and said, uh, that was amazing and that echoed across uh, the valley, subhanAllah. And, and Muslims were very much excited and happy that Umar uh, who has come and through Umar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted uh, Izzah. And, and is he honor to Islam, subhanAllah. And subhanAllah. This is such a great personality, respectable of my nation today. We are talking about who is uh, the second Caliph of Islam, uh, subhanAllah. Uh, inshallah, as we will be talking further about this great personality. Uh, but now let's include one kala, uh, one manqabat, inshallah, uh, in the court of Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam, radiallahu ta'ala. के फजल से मैं हूँ गदा फारों के आजम का खुदा के फजल से मैं हूँ गदा फारों के आजम का खुदा के फजल से मैं हूँ गदा फारों के आजम का खुदा का मोहम्मद फारों के Karam Allah ka hai dam Nabi ki mujhe pe rahmat hai Karam Allah ka hai dam Nabi ki mujhe pe rahmat hai Mujhe hai do jahan mein a Sarafaru ke azam ka Mujhe hai do jahan mein a Sarafaru ke azam Kuda ke fazil se mein hu Gada faru ke azam ka Kuda ke fazil se mein hu Gada faru ke azam ka Gali se ulki shaita tum Daba kar baag jata hai Gali se ulki shaita tum Daba kar baag jata hai موسیقی 
गदाफारो के आजम का सहाबा और अहबैत के दिल में महाबत है सहाबा और अहले बैत के दिल में महाबत है बफे रजा में हूँ गदाफारो के आजम का बफे जाने रजा में हूँ गदाफारू के आजम का खुदा के फजल से मैं हूँ गदाफारू के आजम का खुदा के फजल से मैं हूँ गदाफारू के आजम का रहे तेरी अता से या खुदा तेरी विनायत से रहे तेरी अता से या खुदा तेरी विनायत से हमारे हाथ में दाम सदा फारू के आजम का हमारे हाथ में दाम सदा फारू के आजम का खुदा के फजल से मैं हूँ गदा फारू के आजम का खुदा के फजल से मैं हूँ गदा फारू के आजम का शहादत खुदा तार को दे दे मदीने में शहादत है खुदा तार को दे दे मदीने में करम फरमा इलाहीवा सिता फारो के आजम का करम फरमा इलाहीवा सिता फारो के आजम का खुदा के फजल से मैं हूँ गदा फारो के आजम का खुदा का मोहम्मद मुस्तफा फारो के आजम का respected views of brother Richard alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin we have got love of sahaba e kiram we've got love of ahlul bayt we've got love of awliya e kiram we've got love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved and this is what our deen our islam our aqeedah desires that and this is where alhamdulillah any day comes which is specific to sahaba e kiram or ahlul bayt or awliya e kamilin or salaf salihin alhamdulillah madani channel brings these programs to educate our upcoming generations to talk about our heroes of islam to talk about their life and legacy and this is what we are doing today we are talking about second caliph of islam sayyid umar farooq e azam radiyallahu ta'ala and who is amongst ashara mubashara those they got the glad tiding of jannah in their lifetime from the tongue of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam wasim abasmi there is so much to talk about alhamdulillah Indeed. about this great personality uh, if you could please explain in initially his a brief introduction and some of his alqabad and titles he is very much famous of and then inshallah we'll take it further from there subhanallah indeed is one as you mentioned regarding um, the greatness of farooq azam radiyallahu anhu there's so much to talk about and from every perspective whether you talk about his name whether you talk about his titles whether you talk about his lineage they you just the imam musamma indeed you you'll be amazed to see his greatness from every perspective of all these um, aspects when you talk about his blessed name for example his name was umar and mm-hmm. it's amazing to know amazing to know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept his umar even prior to his embracing of islam and even after embracing of islam because many companions were said whose name were diff- names were different before embracing islam during the era of ignorance and after embracing islam but look at the the amazing fact that his name was umar even before his embracing of islam even after the embracing of islam now ulama they've mentioned that the meaning of umar is the one who keeps something enlivened Right. and or someone who enlivens something so either someone who keeps something enlivened or something who enlivens something now since allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give honor to islam through farooq azam radiyallahu anhu allah was going to enliven islam through umar bin khattab radiyallahu anhu this is one of the reasons ulama mentioned that allah almighty had kept his name as umar even before the embracing of islam and after the embracing of islam and the reason because islam 
remained enlivened because the two meanings we earlier covered because Islam remained enlivened through Farooq Azam that is also why his name was kept as Umar and the reason why you mentioned him as being Ismail Ba Musamma what does it mean someone who duly reflects the meaning of his name yeah. so what his name meant that is exactly what Islam experienced through him so this is one of the reasons why his name was kept as Umar by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even prior to his embracing of Islam and another fascinating factor is one way that Farooq Azam oh, is yeah. that personality who's also mentioned in the heavens was also mentioned in the previous scriptures, scriptures yeah. and his names have been differently uh, mentioned in uh, in the heavens and in previous scriptures so it is stated that the name of the second caliph of islam Sayyidina umar bin khattab radiyallahu in the heavens is farooq in the injil is kafi in the torah is mantaqul haq and in paradise is Siraj. Subhanallah, subhanallah. These are the names of Farooq Azam radiallahu how they've been mentioned in the heavens, in Injil, in the Torah, and in Jannah, in paradise. And what was the name given to Farooq Azam radiallahu from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the honor of the biggest honors? Regarding this, of a mother, the mother of believers, Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha remarks that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa kept the name of Umar as Farooq. Also one of the titles and kept the name of Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab as Farooq. Now is one by all other aspects, all other elements on one side. But when we talk about his name being kept by none other than the final messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. When his name being kept as Umar by none other than our creator, our Lord Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is biggest of the honors within his own. You know, everything aside, the meaning aside, all other honors, justifications, explanations on one side, but someone being granted a name and also a name of this caliber by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what can be said about his honor, about his dignity, about his majesty, sure. about his grandeur that he's been given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I mean the name, but the kunya was also given Allah. by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was mentioned that his kunya, Abu Hafs, which was given to him by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Indeed. he is the lion of Islam. Indeed. Subhanallah. And in in his era, the 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 borders of Islam, the way they were expanded, and the way Islam was flourished, and Subhanallah, and strengthened. Uh, Subhanallah. There is no other caliph of Islam Indeed. in their time. It was done. And Sayyid Umar Farooq Azam radiyallahu taala ends uh, tenure and era, and, and the, when he was in uh, in in office you can say in the umur of Khilafat, subhanallah, that has been tremendous and amazing. There is so much many Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel to learn. Rasim Abbas, we talk about the uh, love for Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He is uh, exceptional. When Indeed. we talk about his Ids and in Kisari, he is exceptional. Indeed. Subhanallah, his taqwa is exceptional. His love for Quran, love for Salah is exceptional. Things. Inshallah, we'll be, we'll be touching all that. But very famous account of his acceptance of Islam. Right? Uh, and from uh, the, the time when before he he was seen as an enemy of Islam. Indeed. right? But then, subhanallah, when he entered in the fold of Islam, then the way Islam was given Izzah and, and subhanAllah the way that he protected and defended Islam that is also amazing and very briefly if you could mention that account that how subhanAllah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and this murad of Rasul alayhi wa sallatu salam himself right who had left home uh, to uh, make uh, shaheed, right? To, uh, in, uh, to, to martyr Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. With this intention, he leaves home. But subhanAllah, when he comes and he presents himself in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recites shahada. What is this brief account for the viewers of Padrisha? SubhanAllah, it's amazing, Rizwan. I mean, also shows the the fortune of Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, that uh, what intention, as you mentioned, he left his home with and what a fortune and honor he ended up with Subhanallah. and um, Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, the, pro the, the, the pleasure of the Prophet والسلام, is the essence of everyone and it would be of course for the likes of Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, as well to the highest of the degrees but imagine on the other hand Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, being the wish of the Prophet the desire of the Prophet this shows that what would be the rank and honor and station of Farooq Azam radiallahu anh. 
and the famous account you're referring to is one by uh, Anas bin Malik radiallahu anh, he has narrated this very uh, account where Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, with the same intention you mentioned earlier left his house with the intention of Ma'adullah martyring the Prophet والسلام, and on the way he met another person who informed him of his own sister and his brother-in-law that they've already embraced Islam and you're going to someone else when he questioned Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, and he told him that I'm going with this intention and then he uh, he in reply to listening to his intention first find out your own home <laughs> first find out in your own home that that religion has already entered your home now Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, he goes to the house of um, uh, his sister Sayyidatuna Umm Jamil bint Khattab radiallahu anha oh, and uh, her husband meaning Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anha's brother-in-law who was Sayyid bin Zaid radiallahu anha amongst the Ashara Mubashara Subhanallah Now as he reaches over there he hears something being recited Now Sayyidina Khabbab radiallahu anha was also present inside the house and he was teaching them the Quran Allah. So the, uh, the sister of Farooq Azam radiallahu anha brother-in-law of Farooq Azam radiallahu anha to both of them Sayyidina Khabbab radiallahu anha is teaching the Quran Now Farooq Azam radiallahu anha he knocks at the door Mm. And as soon as inside they come to know there is Umar on the door, Khabab Radilan, he hides, and uh, his sister, she opens the door, and Farooq Azam Radilan, he becomes angry and uh, he starts asking her, questioning her about the new religion, i.e., Islam that they have accepted. Now, the sister, she now he also became a bit physical with her and all that, but the sister, she stayed steadfast and she said, No matter whatever you do, We've embraced Islam now, and there's no way back that we are um, going back from it. And then they question the beliefs of Farooq Azam radiallahu anh. At the same time, brother-in-law Sayyid Said bin Zaid radiallahu anh, he's also there, and he also starts being a bit physical with him. And in the midst of all this, he comes across the verses of the Quran that were being recited, the verses of Surah Taha, yeah. and he asks the sister, his sister, that what is this? that you were reciting and now the sister she stops him that you are un impure at the moment Allah you cannot Allah. touch it hmm. you cannot read it you're impure at the moment and Umar bin Khattab because now he was sitting down and he was becoming a bit curious by looking at that what is this that they were reciting anyhow when the sister she told him that you're impure you can't touch it now Farooq Azam performs ghusl and now he starts reciting what the sister and brother-in-law, they were reciting the verses of Surah Taha, the, the word of Allah, the holy Quran, the glorious Quran, the source of guidance, our life, our everything, the essence of goodness, the glorious Quran, may our lives be sacrificed upon the holy Quran. And Farooq Azam radiallahu starts reciting those verses that were being taught by Sayyid al-Khabbab radiallahu to his sister and brother. Now, as he was reciting those verses, the, the state of his heart started to change. The love for Islam started to settle in his heart. The love for the Prophet ﷺ started to develop in his heart. Now he recites the verses of the Quran and now he just, asks... Just to add here, see there are certain uh, lands, piece of land, which are already ready. Allah. Right? <laughs> they just need a seed to sow there. Indeed. And then subhanAllah, uh, all, 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 all it needs a little bit of watering Water. in that time, in that atmosphere. See that was, I think, the heart of Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala was Allah. already made that way and it just needed the words of Quran Subhan and Subhanallah the time and in a perfect time and then it just hit him. Subhanallah and it's, it's written uh, Rizwan, we asked Farooq Azam radiallahu was reciting the verses of the Quran and he of course Farooq Azam radiallahu wasn't an ordinary individual. Farooq Azam radiallahu had very great academic brilliance as well. He right. understood what he was reading. Mm. So as he was re reciting the verses of the Quran, the, the state of his heart kept changing. Now he asks about the Holy Prophet والسلام, that where is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. So uh, he was told that he is in Dari Arqam. Mm. Now Umar bin Khattab radiallahu he goes to Dari Arqam where yeah. the Prophet والسلام, is all the companions there in the courtyard was the Prophet والسلام, in, is in the room inside. Now Farooq Azam radiallahu look at this beautiful uh, incident that happens now he knocks at the door all the companions they gather they know it's Umar radiallahu mm -hmm. up until now Umar Farooq radiallahu has not embraced Islam the mm -hmm. companions they gather and who's over there 
another lion of Allah, Amir Hamza radiallahu an. Subhanallah. What, what does he say? That let him come. If he's come with a good intention, good and well and good. Otherwise, you can imagine the words of Amir Hamza radiallahu an. And now the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he also comes from inside. And he holds Farooq Azam radiallahu an. He shakes him that you will not stop from what you do. Along these words, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam tells him. And Farooq Azam radiallahu an, as soon as he sees the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he recites the shahada. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi salam. Now, as soon as Farooq Azam radiallahu anh embraced Islam, all the companions, they became extremely joyous. And as you mentioned earlier, they raised the slogan of Takbir so loud that it resonated in the valleys of Medina. It was heard in the valleys of Medina. Now Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, up until now, they would worship hidingly. It wouldn't be openly. Now Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, he asked the Prophet ﷺ that, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aren't we upon haqq? And Prophet in this life and in our, after our passing, and the Prophet reassured him that yes, we are upon haqq in this life as well as after our passing. Mm -hmm. Now Azam says that now we will worship openly. We will go out openly. And then Farooq Azam he mentions himself that we left the house in the uh, in the rows of two. In the front row was Amir Hamza radiallahu and in the back row was myself. We went in the courtyard of Haram and we worshipped over there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly. And the disbelievers, one, one gaze they was cast upon Amir Hamza and the second upon myself. And there was a great fear upon the upon the faces of, of the disbelievers as now Two lions of Quraysh, Amir Hamza radiallahu anh was there, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh was oh, there. They, they had embraced Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted great, great, great honor to Islam by the embracing of uh, Islam of Farooq Azam radiallahu anh. And we've covered this account very briefly, this one way, what happened, the verses of Quran he recited, how the state of his heart changed. But in the background of all this, was the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, was the desire of the Prophet ﷺ, it was the wish of the Prophet ﷺ who changed the entire destiny of Farooq Azam upside down. That on, on one side he leaves his house with an ill intention, but on the other hand, where does he end up being? He end up being the second caliph of Islam. He end up being our master. He ends up being our leader. He ends up being the heartbeat of the Muslims. He end up being someone that even non-Muslims look up to. Someone who's left a great legacy, not only for the Muslims, but for the entire mankind, that this is how you live your life. Subhanallah, subhanallah. One is murid and one is murad. Allah, right? Allah. <laughs> murid, he searches for the shaykh. And, and when a shaykh, Subhanallah. Uh, see, Subhanallah has got the wish that he comes respect to Yusuf and then the personality is known to be Sayyidina Faruqi Azam radiallahu ta'ala and inshallah we'll talk further about this great personality Farq Talibu Matthub Samjaykoi this is what Alhamdulillah we're trying to explain inshallah now we will uh, include one naat of Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu salam and then inshallah we'll further continue on this great personality Harana Sibat Me Jarb Liya Hoga Hamara Big Raho Akam Par Gaya Hoga Guna
गीत गीत तेरा नाम ले लिया होगा दिखाई जाएगी महश में शान महबूबी
Beautiful kalam, respected viewers of my nation. Uh, today we're talking about Sayyidina Faruqi Azam radiallahu ta'ala. Wasim Abbas, maybe we talk about Sayyidina Umar Faruqi Azam radiallahu ta'ala and his personality when it stands out in different dimensions. Love of Rasul alayhi salatu is, uh, you see, some of those beautiful distinctive features which stand out in his beautiful personality. Indeed. I would like to share this beautiful hadith which is mentioned Ta'ala. in Sahih al-Bukhari. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Hisham uh, radiallahu Ta'ala, Ta'ala, Ta'ala narrates Ta'ala. that, that we were sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and Umar Faruq Azam radiallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam was holding the hand of Sayyidina Umar Faruq Azam. And uh, he radiallahu ta'ala and said, لَأَنْتَ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا مِنْ نَفْسِهِ Right. O Prophet of Rahman, sallallahu ta'ala You are dearer to me than everything except my own self. Right. See, these people, they were <clears throat> uh, what was in, in their heart that was outside. You see, they were clear what, what was in their heart and that, that's what they would say. And he said that, I love you more than anything except my own self, my nafs. Now, Rasulullah so, replies, Subhanallah, Allah Akbar. Aqa salam said, uh, No, la walladhi nafsi yadihi hatta akuna ahabba ilayka min nafsi. No, by him in whose hand my soul is, till I am dearer to you than your own self. That your iman are, will not complete, or your love. Will not be. No. So this is what Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam said. And Umar Faruqi Azam radiallahu ta'ala and humbly said, Wallahi la anta ahab ilayya min nafsi. O beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I swear by Allah, you are dearer to me than my own self. Subhanallah. And Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam said, Now, O Umar, meaning your love is perfect. In other words, your Iman is Muhammad. Because the love of Rasul alayhi salatu was salam is the essence of uh, the Iman. Because there is exactly. hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. None of you can be a true believer, mu'min, until I am dearer to him than his father, his children, and all the people. This is also in Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? So the perfection of one's iman is to love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than anything, even more than parents, more than children, more than wealth, more than umal. Anything you love in this dunya, you should love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than anything, even your own self, your own life. Until we do not love Rasulullah alaihi wasallam more than everything in this world. The, our Iman cannot become kamil, it cannot become mukammal, it cannot become complete. So the essence of our Iman is the love of Rasul alayhi salatu salam. And Umar Faruqi Azam radiallahu ta'ala practically, you see, he demonstrated that, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I love you more than anything in this world. And then finally he said, even more than my life. And when they said it, they actually meant it. They meant it. They, they meant it. And and the life and legacy of Umar Faruq Azam radiallahu mm-hmm. ta'ala demands and teaches us that this is how a true believer should be. Indeed. This is how he should complete his iman. This is how he should love Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam. And subhanallah, there are so many occasions when Umar Faruq Azam radiallahu ta'ala proved 
this is what he actually meant. Uh, he was the wazir and mushir, he was the minister and advisor of Rasulullah on all Salaam. probably the expeditions when Rasulullah Salaam. Went, and on, on other affairs also. Uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu sure. ta'ala, he's not only the minister on this dunya, but he is also the minister uh, in the heavens also, sure. Rasul alayhi salatu salam. So this is the zat of Umar Faruqi Azam radiallahu ta'ala, and where we can learn so much that I think, lahad mein ishqe rukhe shah ka daag leke chale, meri raat suni thi charaag leke chale. And this is what respect news of Madhini Shaymin. Uh, one thing we can learn from the seerah of Sayyidina Umar Faruqi Azam is the love of Rasul alayhi salatu salam. We should also love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than anything. What would you say on this? Or anything would you like to add here? Subhanallah. Definitely, it is one way. This is like the essence of a faith, and um, <coughs> something around which the iman of a believer revolves around. And when we read the Sirah of Farooq Azam radiyallahu anhu, it's a perfect example for us that how should one drown himself in the love of the Prophet and then beautiful point that you touched upon but yes we do come to know that Farooq Azam loved the Prophet daily and we also learn from his seerah that we should also do so and the perfection of faith implies a person drowning himself in the love of the Prophet but the point you touched across earlier uh, touched upon earlier was that through the seerah of Farooq Azam we also learn that what does it actually mean. Understanding one thing that we need to do it is one thing, but then understanding how it is done, that's another. And Farooq Azam throughout his entire life, uh, when he was caliph, when he embraced Islam, how he loved the Prophet how he followed the Sharia, how he made people follow the Sharia, everything totally depicts and shows us that what a true devotee of the Prophet is and what loving the Prophet actually entails. Subhanallah. Respectful of Madhini Shailin, we are talking about Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala an. Masih Abbas, any other feature would you like to mention for viewers about the life of Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam? Subhanallah. Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu is one way when we talk about him, the unmatched wisdom that he possessed. The intellect yeah. that he possessed, Hikmet, the the wisdom, the the far, the full sightedness that Allah Almighty had blessed him with, that was taken to none. Yeah, that was again amazing, and the feats, the achievements that he had attained, the the rule that spread of Muslims during his era, it shows us the great wisdom of Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu. As without having wisdom, a ruler cannot achieve the achievements which Farooq Azam radiallahu achieved. And the bigger the achievements, the more wisdom he possessed. And now Farooq Azam radiallahu if you look at the area of land that was conquered during his caliphate, which spans over two million square miles perhaps, um, and um, the other achievements that, that, that he uh, made Islam received during his era shows the greatness of his wisdom and intellect that he possessed. Now, just a couple of accounts to quick, quickly get a gist of his greatness, of his wisdom, yeah. uh, we'll go through inshallah. There are many, but uh, a few that I've chosen to mention today are um, the most difficult of the times that the Muslim faced which was the passing of the Prophet and the Prophet physically departed from this world. That was the toughest of the times for the companions. Now, during the Prophet apparent life, the companions, they had the source of guidance. They had the coolness of their hearts. Any issue they faced, they would go in the court of the Prophet take their ruling. They had any problem, they would go in the court of the Prophet Now, the Prophet physically departs from this world. Now, the grief, the sadness of Prophet's passing is at one side. And on the other side, another issue arose that who should they go to for guidance now? Mm. Now there was a need for someone to be chosen as a caliph of the Muslims who could be followed. Mm. You can imagine the Prophet ﷺ has physically departed from this world. There's a great great environment of sadness and turmoil within Madinat al-Munawwara. Sahaba, they're very, very grieved and saddened. In the midst of all this, there needed to be a personality who could gather all the Muslims together. Now, the Ansar Sahaba and Muhajireen Sahaba, they had a dispute of 
uh, within their opinions that who should be the caliph of the Muslims. And there was a great risk that this dispute could lead to many um, more severe consequences, as you could imagine what the situation would be at that time. And the enemies of Islam could also uh, use this situation um, into their favor, the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, all those. In the midst of all these severe testing times, it was none other than the second caliph of Islam, Umar bin Khattab عنه, who excelled forward, who came forward and pledged allegiance upon the first caliph of Islam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq عنه, and told everyone that he's Abdul Bashir Ba'd al-Anbiya, he is the one who should be pledged allegiance to, he is the one who should be Khalifa al-Muslimin, Amir al-Mu'mineen, and he's the one, the right personality, the right individual who should be followed and obeyed to, and who is the Khalifa of the Prophet Prior to this action of Farooq Azam there was great dispute amongst all the companions. But as soon as the likes of Farooq Azam pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr Siddiq all the companions, they agreed upon this. There was a consensus amongst all the companions. They all pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr Siddiq He became the first Caliph of Islam and a great um, discord that could have arisen was subsided, was uh, eliminated by Farooq Azam even before it could be raised. This was the wisdom of Farooq Azam yeah. the foresightedness of Farooq Azam that he gave this Ummah, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq as the first Caliph of Islam by pledging allegiance to him at the first and all the companions then they Follow. followed him. This was one uh, incident as one way. Another incident um, occurred when um, Sayyidina Umar Farooq he was about to pass away. Now Umar bin Khattab he is Khalifa al Muslimin, he is Amir al Mu'mineen of the um, of the of the believers. And now upon his passing, when when he was about to pass away, because Fa Abu Bakr Sadiq had appointed Farooq Azam as his successor after he passes away. But now Farooq Azam upon uh, when the time of his passing came, now he also had to make sure that he leaves the caliphate in the hands of such a systematic establishment where no such discord rises. There was a big risk of something big to occur at that very moment of time as well. But Farooq Azam radiallahu he appointed, um, uh, what do you call, appointed Ashura, an assembly of six companions, oh, alayhi one, and then he left this matter upon them to decide that who would be the third caliph of Islam. And this was again a great uh, act of wisdom that he performed even before passing away from this world, that he saved this ummah from falling into a great discord. And this group of six companions, this um, uh, this shura of the companions, Ali Muridwan, they chose none other than Sayyidina mm -hmm. Uthman bin Affan radiallahu as a third caliph of Islam. And this ummah, the believers, the Muslims, they had someone like Usman Ghani radiallahu as their third caliph. And this was again the, fo the foresightedness, the wisdom of Farooq Azam radiallahu that he gave this system to the Muslim ummah even before his passing. When a person is passing away, away is one with us, is one of the most testing times that a person can ever face. And even at that time, he's thinking about the ummah and he's using his wisdom and he's saving the ummah from falling into a great discord and he gave this great established system to the Muslim ummah and the Muslim ummah is highly indebted to Farooq Azam for his wisdom for whatever he did even before uh, he was uh, passing away from this mortal world. Th these were just a few accounts depicting the wisdom, the greatness, the intellect of Farooq Azam that there was no one like him and no one ever would be like him because Farooq Azam is Farooq Azam Mashallah, respect to Yusuf Madani Sharif. We are talking about the greatness of second caliph of Islam, Muradi Rasul uh, Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala and subhanallah. Inshallah, we will be talking further in detail about the different features and dimensions of this personality. Today, we've just covered uh, how, what, what was the account of his uh, coming in the fold of Islam. And then we also touched upon the love of Rasul alayhi salatu salam. We touched upon the hikmah and wisdom what he possessed and his uh, love and kindness for the the people, the way he possessed. We also heard that account in the start, subhanAllah, the way he possessed and, and the, the way he served the riaya and the people uh, of his uh, caliphate. Inshallah, and now uh, we will we'll move further. Wasim uh, al what other important feature would you like to share with you of Padin Shell at the end? SubhanAllah, there are many, there's one way. There are many, I'm lost for words. Um, as I was going through the Seerah Farooq Azam but just to cover a few inshallah. 
um, if you talk about how Farooq Azam has been mentioned in other heavenly scriptures, other heavenly books, this is also an amazing fact regarding Farooq Azam where once Farooq Azam asked uh, a monk that, do you find anything written for us in your scriptures, Subhanallah. in your books? Now he said that we find in our books about your traits and about your deeds, your attributes and your deeds, but not your name, not specifically your name, but about your traits, your attributes and your deeds. Now this monk is referring to Farooq Azam Through the attributes and traits mentioned in their books, they realized that this is being mentioned about Farooq Azam So Farooq Azam he again asked him that, what do you find in your books written about me? To which he said, that yes, in our books it is written that you are an iron horn. An iron horn. To which he says, that what is iron horn? Like, surprising, is iron horn? What is this? Like, he asked him. And he said, that it means that a very strict ruler in the matters of deen. In the matters of deen, justice, yeah. to establish justice, to establish the matters Shariah. of deen, a very strict ruler. Upon this, Farooq Azam he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said that Allah is the greatest and all praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At another occasion, Sayyidina Abdullah he narrates that once Amir al Mu'mineen Sayyidina Farooq Azam he mounted his horse and um, the garment he was wearing it uncovered from his lower shin. And the people of Najran they saw that there was a black mark over there on his lower shin when the garment uncovered from there they saw the people of Najran saw a black mark over there and they said that this is the very person regarding whom is written in our books that he will expel us from our lands so, 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 so the mention of Farooq Azam is also in the other heavenly scriptures in the books of the people of the book which we see and this again depicts the greatness and the magnificence of Farooq Azam that he was known to the people of other faith as well, the people of the followers of other books as well. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. See, last we didn't talk about the Zat of Farooq Azam Not only this, but even the ayahs of Quran, Subhanallah. which were revealed um, because of, you see, the desire of uh, Umar Farooq Azam and also, like in, in some of the matters, he desired that this should mm-hmm. happen this way. Then the muwafiqat, uh, which which came uh, with the Umar Farooq Azam radiyallahu ta'ala, his wish, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's muwafiqat, that, that also came with Umar radiyallahu ta'ala, which is known as muwafaqat Umar radiyallahu ta'ala, and because certain ayahs were revealed uh, in this regard. So, it's very, very important and very famous ayah of Quran. Right? Uh, once actually Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala and he said in the court of Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shall we not make maqam Ibrahim Allah, 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 <laughs> Allah. Allah. Upon this, the ayah of Quran revealed in Surah Al-Baqarah, right, verse 125, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered believers that you should make the place of Ibrahim, Maqam Ibrahim, the place of worship for you. So this is what is the uh, shan of Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala, that he wishes something, then the ayah reveals according to uh, his subhanallah, his wish. And this is what a great honor a personality who would possess. And then once Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala and he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, if we do Safa and Marwa's ta'af, meaning Sa'i, Safa and Marwa, uh, then how good it would be if we do this, the Sa'i of Safa and Marwa, Allah. how good it would be. And then subhanallah, the ayah of Quran, which is very famous again, which talks about and then being the sha'ir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna as-safa wal marwata min sha'ir Allah. Faman hajja al-bayta aw i'tamara fala junaha alayhi an yattawafa bihima. This is Surah Al-Baqarah 158, Sarah 2. So this was revealed again. This was uh, again the wish of Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala. And this 
Okay, and now when we also talk about there are certain other eyes of Quran, Subhanallah, regarding Parda, right? That, that's how he also wished. And then the ayah of uh, Parda, the ayah of wailing, uh, which is uh, very famous in Quran, that was also uh, in this regard. So this is there are so many Subhanallah verses of the Quran which we can talk about, which are known as Mawafaqat Umar, which clearly tells the status. Uh, the maqam he possessed in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the court of Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu wa salam. SubhanAllah, indeed is one way. And um, uh, also, again, we were talking about the, uh, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, book in this very regard, which you just mentioned, that reciting the book of Allah, attaining all the reward upon recitation of the Quran, and then, of course, acting upon the rulings of the Quran. Now, on the other hand, you see, as you touched upon that, that was the desire of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu for something to happen uh, in this way, in a certain way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it exactly in accordance to the wish of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. This also again shows the wisdom and intellect of Faruqi Azam radiallahu anhu. That what a great intellectual personality he was. What a great personality full of wisdom and awe he was. That he's wishing for something. Up until now, this command has not been revealed. But he wishes for something and Allah Almighty reveals the command in according to the wish uh, of Faruqi Azam radiallahu anhu. Subhanallah. This shows us the greatness of Faruqi Azam radiallahu anhu. You see, the, uh, the verse of Surah Baqarah which you mentioned and this very verse where the Sha'ir of Allah Almighty Safa and Marwa are being mentioned. You see, when a person recites them, he does get the reward. He does, it does remind a person of the, of the Kaaba of uh, Safa and Marwa and all that. But who knows that these verses were, were revealed by the virtue of Aruqi Azam And there are so many Subhanallah Mariya Sabai brothers and viewers of Madhuri Sharon, different dimensions of the life of Umar Faruqi Azam ta'ala and his his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his ids, his inkisari, his humbleness. And there is a big comprehensive book Maktabatul Madina has compiled and written. If you could show this Subhanallah Fazani Faruqi Azam, and you can see that how comprehensive and big intense this book is and this is just volume one and there is a volume two also so you can imagine the seerah uh, how expanded the seerah is definitely we cannot do justice to cover in this very short span of time in this program but what we do we take some of the pearls a uh, few flowers we pick up from that bouquet and we present so that this fragrance can go uh, into your houses also and you can also subhanallah uh, adorn your personalities with this beautiful fragrance and you can implement the seed of Sayyidina Umar Faruqi Azam in your lives and our children they know about our great heroes of Islam, our great pious predecessors likes of uh, Umar Faruqi Azam uh, Time doesn't permit us any further to go ahead, time is up until next time. Keep watching Madani channel, keep reciting Salat of Nabi alayhi salatu salam. Sallu ala al-Habib. صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. The man of justice, the man with wisdom, the day of Faruq Azam, the day of Faruq Azam, the day of Faruq.